Hi ladies and gents, um, quick podcast here, what we're going to be looking at is Purchase Ledger and Source Document, which for the um, Purchases Ledger is the invoice. We're first of all looking at the, the Source Document, why do we need one? Well the Source Document proves that the transactions happen and companies will keep the Source Document for several years after it's occurred so that they can go back and prove if there's any question about fraud in the business or any accounting irregularities, that the actual transactions they say have happened have occurred. So it's an important document. And for purchases, what's going to happen is that the company supplying the goods will send them an invoice telling them how much the goods have cost, total amount owed, and uh, listing several of the key factors. Key things that you need to know for your exam, you're going to need to know some of the things that will always be on an invoice. They won't always look like the one that I've made up, okay, but what they will do is always contain certain bits of information. First one, and the obvious one, is it will tell you it's an invoice. Okay. Next thing, it will tell you the company supplying the goods. So in this case, it's Pepsi are supplying the goods. It will have the address of the supplying company. It will have a unique invoice number um, so that each document that's sent out by the business will have a unique code. It will tell you the date when the goods were actually delivered. And it will also have line items. Each of these line items will always detail what the product delivered is, how many of the product were delivered, and what the standard price per unit is, and then what the total price in total for all of those uh, those goods was. So in this case, it's 24 cartons of, of uh, coal have been delivered. They are $6 per uh, carton, and therefore the total value of the cartons of coal that have been delivered are $144. For orange cans, okay, 12 at $5.50. So the total value of all 12 cans uh, 12 cartons is $66. And they're also delivering chips or crisps, depending on which country you come from. Okay, and they've delivered six cartons of crystal chips. Prices $12 per carton, so the total is 72. We'll then see the total cost of all those goods. And on the next slide, quite important, there are two types of discounts that companies give their customers. The first type is a trade discount. That's given for one of two reasons. Either A, the customer is a regular customer who buys large quantities over time and therefore we're going to give them a, a lower price if you like because of the, uh, the regular orders that they place. Or one off large orders where a customer orders an awful lot of goods in one go that also offer a discount. So in this case they're going to offer to um, Algon General Stores a 20% trade discount. So 20% of $282 comes to $56.40. And therefore, the invoice total or the net total for the goods is $225.60. That's what Algon and General Stores, the customer, will owe to, to PepsiCo, the supplying company. Final two things it will always show on an invoice. It will always show the customer and their address. And it will also have on there the information for the cash discount. The cash discount is given to companies for either early payment or sometimes just for cash payment. Okay, so in this case, there'll be a further 5% reduction on that 225.60 if this invoice is paid within one month. And that's to encourage early payment by customers. The quicker you can get your cash, the less chance there is that that business is going to go bankrupt owing you money. Right, what I've done for you is a couple of questions here. The first question, it's got an invoice, and you'll need to just put all the correct information into the correct boxes. And then the second one is a slightly different type of question. Okay, what you're going to need to do is to fill in the boxes that are, that are given. But in these two cases here, you will also need to work out what the price and the quantity of goods supplied has been, because that's something they do reasonably often in an exam. Okay, so what I'd suggest you do is you pause this recording now, 
and have a look at that. Welcome back. Hope you have no problems with the uh, questions. Um, the next one we're going to look at is the actual um, journal itself. And this one's a purchases journal. You'll sometimes see it called the day book, and you'll also sometimes see it called the subsidiary book. I'm going to call it the purchases journal. Okay, that's um, just because one of the specs I teach calls it a journal. We've got here a list. So this is what your purchases journal is going to contain. It's always going to contain the date for each transaction. It's always going to contain information on who supplied the goods. It will always record the uh, the invoice number. And there's two things here, two lines here that you might not always record. So I put them here, the gross total and the trade discount received. That isn't necessarily always recorded. Sometimes it's just that net total from the invoice that gets recorded in the purchases journal. And in the examples I'm going to get you guys to do, okay, I've just put the net totals in. As you can see, gross total take away the trade discount equals the net total anyway. Right, something a little bit different now to what we've always done when we've been doing double entry. Um, the first part's relatively straightforward. For each transaction, we're going to enter a credit entry in the purchases ledger in the individual customer's accounts. If you remember back to when we talked, first talked about um, the different ledgers, the purchases ledger, that contains all the supplier's accounts. The general ledger contains all the other accounts. So our first supplier for our business is Coca-Cola. They're going to go on the credit side on their transaction the 1st of the 11th, 2015. And it's going to go on there because the business now owes Coca-Cola $780. And therefore, Coca-Cola is a liability. Happy Burgers. So this is probably a restaurant and Happy Burgers supply the business with goods with a value of $900. That was on the 15th of November. Okay, and therefore the business owes Happy Burgers some money. PepsiCo, the business bought some goods from PepsiCo on the 28th of November. And those goods were worth $225.60. And the final transaction, I'll just put this quick, uh, I forgot to put the scrub throughs on there. Final transaction from Coca Cola, that was on the 30th, 11th, 2015. All purchases, and they were worth $500. Now, this is a bit that's different. Obviously, companies make a lot of purchases, and they do this also with the sales, and therefore, they have to make a lot of entries in the purchases ledger, in the general ledger. So the purchases ledger account would have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of individual transactions. So what businesses do to make life easier, in the purchases journal, and indeed all of the other uh, journals to do with sales and purchases, they will, on a regular basis, and most exams is done on a monthly basis, they will find the total of all of their purchases, which in this case is $2,405.60. And what we're going to do, rather than make four individual entries in the purchases ledger, we're just going to make one entry at the end of the month. And we're going to say that's come from the purchases that says purchases, purchases, journal. Okay, and we're just going to put in the total amount. 2405.60. And hopefully what you can see now is that this total here should equal the total of all the credit entries I've made for that month. So just do a double check. Okay, it hasn't quite worked. And it does. And then very quickly, guys, questions for you to do. Okay, from the general ledger, purchases ledger.